I just drove from Charlotte, North Carolina. He quoted me 15 to and that one cash. Now you're telling me a different story? Things are very fast paced here. With what I'm offering you, we're breaking even. Ask me how I'm not supposed to be upset. Nope. Then you need to compensate me a thousand dollars for my trip over here. Guys, don't forget, before we go on with the video, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell, do all those buttons to help our channel grow. Let's get back to the video. Hey, I got one, I got one. Uh, so this is, can I check it out? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, try it out. And it's full set and I can get the uh, box papers out. So you have all the links for it and everything is all there. So full set. Yeah, yeah, okay. full set. Cool, cool, cool. And cool. I think uh, 20, 20, I believe. Trading this towards the root beer. We're seeing how good they're gonna be to me. If they're gonna be <laughs> good to me, then it's gonna be a done deal. I guess it depends on this guy because I'm trading this guy too. We said we can do 10 trading on this. Okay. And then 16 on this one. Okay. That. So then that would be the case. We offered you 22 for the root beer, correct? Yes. So this watch and this watch mm -hmm. and then four back to me. Yeah. I was hoping to get five back and give me an extra 10, 50 on this. You know what I'm saying? But if you could do five back, I'll do to do it with you. Let me run this by Adrian real quick. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll get back to you on that. Okay. okay. This one has the extra length. It's all downstairs with the box, the car. Okay, so what, what, what was the deal with these? We had cloned them. Where, where are the cars? They're downstairs with the others. So yeah. We had cloned them 10. He wants us to do five on top of the root beer for both. What's the cost on the root beer? Which root beer? One, uh, 19. It's the 20, 20, I believe. Okay, so here we have a very interesting situation that has actually never happened before. Usually when clients come and submit their watches for sale, the first thing that they put is the reference number of the watch, the condition report, as well as a few images of the watch here. So in this case, the customer came and he put in the reference number 126331, which signifies a two-tone rose gold datejust with a fluted bezel. This wasn't originally the watch that you sent me. You sent me a different watch. Not that one, but this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it wasn't It wasn't a used smooth. This was the one that we originally offered. No, this and then this was the extra one. No, this this was the one that was in Zendesk. The new one. Now, when he sent the picture, the picture actually at first glance looked like a fluted bezel, but when in fact it was a smooth dome bezel. I offered on, on this watch for 15.2 yeah. was a brand new fluted bezel Jubilee mm -hmm. br br band, brand new. Mm -hmm. This is nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. In the reflection of the smooth dome bezel, it looked like there was ridges, like a fluted bezel does. Yeah, this is the one he had in Teams that we offered. Oh my God, I thought that was a fluted bezel. It's just fluting. So I made an offer on a fluted bezel watch when in fact it was a smooth bezel watch and in the market, the smooth bezel watch brings significantly less. What's up guys? Hey, what's up man? How you doing? So I can make the drive all the way up here. So we get a lot of inquiries that come in. So we had two simultaneous Wimbledons that came through the system. One of which you also said was a 126331 you can see here, which is a fluted bezel, which garners a lot more money than a smooth bezel. I sent pictures. I did, I, I saw one, two, six, three, three, one, and then even in the picture, like if you look at it at first glance, I literally thought with this, this right here, I thought that was fluted at first sight. Okay, so the, the whatever deal Chris was trying to strike was, it's just impossible. I mean, this watch, what did, what did you quote him on the root here? Uh, 22. 22, so I would need to be at, let's say, 13 on this. Hold on a second, sir. Hold on a second, sir. I just drove from Charlotte, North Carolina. I sent you a picture. He quoted me 15 to and that one cash, or 16 in trade. That's what he quoted me. I just drove from Charlotte, North Carolina with that deal. I have a text message to back this up, and now you're telling me a different story? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Was what do you mean you know what to tell me? It was a mistake I'm, on our end. I mean, I, I don't know. Then you need to compensate me $1,000 for my trip over here. I need to compensate you $1,000. Sir, I have text messages proving. Well, you put in the wrong, you put in the wrong I sent a picture. Okay, well, you were communicating with him. You weren't communicating with me. I was communicating right. with somebody. I don't know, I don't know you guys. I'm communicating with, I found you guys on Instagram. I found you guys on YouTube. Look, I sent all the information. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't. I don't mean to, to, to get anybody upset here. How would you not be upset? How would the point? The, ask me how I'm not supposed to be upset. The point I'm trying to make is, is in, it was an honest mistake. 
right? Honest mistake on both of our parts because you put in one two six three three one. This is a one two six know. three oh one. I don't know. I don't know. Look, sir. Well, it's, it's right here. Which you and you didn't supply pictures of the card or anything. When I saw the picture originally, it looked like a fluted bezel, and that's my fault. Because then in the system, another one came through with the fluted bezel, which is worth significantly more. Chris brings this watch up. It's not worth the fifteen two. It's worth a thousand less. Right, so if I'm taking this for 14, and I'm taking this for, let's say, 10, so that's 24. So we'll give you $4,000. That's the best I can do. That's me breaking even when it's all said and done. Well, I don't mean, I'm not like this. <laughs> Listen, I understand, I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't. I'm in the car business too, so uh, you sell watches, I sell cars, you know, you know what I mean? It's frustrating when you get an offer of this amount of money and then you get there, it's a different story. I understand that it was just an, it was, it was a the serial number, both our, the was, serial numbers was we, had, we are, things are very fast paced here, very fast paced. Yeah. In the picture, and that was my mistake, it literally looks like if you can see at first glance, it looks fluted, right? I looked at it real quick. You can see how I made that error, right? And then at the same time, you wrote 126331, which is a fluted bezel. I've sold hundreds of these yeah. smooth bezels. It's a dog, right? Dog. I would, pay, I, I would pay twelve thousand for this and ten thousand for that. I would be out of you would be out of pocket. We'd be out of pocket zero. If I had it my way. But since you came here from North Carolina, I'm trying to make it work and trying to find. Listen, what you do. Listen, I, what I'm w w with what I'm offering you, we're breaking even. Listen, so thank you for coming to see. Listen, us. if not, I apologize and listen. What I'm telling you. Hold on, let me speak now, please. I, I'll let you speak. Here's what I. Here's what if you could do this for me, please. Let's make it. 45. I'm not, it, it, it makes no sense for us. So 4,000 back to me plus the watch. All right, is that, is that fair? Do you see where the mistake is? I went? understand, I understand. I don't mean to raise my voice here. This is out of frustration. Driving all night, got here two o'clock in the morning, got a room in Baltimore, woke up early, came over here. It was hard on us, you know what I mean? I plan on doing business with you in the future, you know what I mean? Just so you know. Yes. Because of your trip up here and as a, cur as a courtesy, as a mistake, I'm a man of my word, I'll honor it. Thank you. What was so, your name again? Adrian. Adrian. Okay, so things may have gotten a little bit heated there, but cooler heads prevail. I felt really bad that he came from North Carolina and it was a mistake on both my part and there was a little bit of error on his part. He's not in the business, so that little number, it was a mistake on his end. At the end of the day, the customer is always right and we, we try to do our best to make everybody as happy as possible. <gasps> Cameron. You're nothing, you're nothing. Want to... I didn't drop the bag. You ready? Let's go. I like I'm ready. I like the chest hair though, it's nice. A lot of people like white chest hair. You're gonna make home video, right? I'm gonna make home video. Yeah. Home video for, for yourself. <laughs> okay, so I'm about to take these two watches to one of my clients. He actually doesn't know I'm coming. He thinks it's the driver, but I am. <gasps> Kevin! I didn't know it was your birthday. His name not it was. It was my birthday. I know. I just saw it today. Nobody told me. By the rec for the record, she calls me Kevin for no reason. Well, first of all, you said your name was Kyle. Actually, no, that's what... I said my name was Kyle. <laughs> that's what sure Roman calls you. All right, that sounds good. All right, I'll get back to you with details and uh, we'll be in touch shortly. Take care. Bye-bye. So on the phone, uh, I got a Source and Explorer 2 for a client. And right here, I actually have a watch I just sold. It's actually a Zenith El Primero, but for ladies. And as you can see, it's actually got a beautiful mother of pearl dial with a diamond bezel on a leather strap and rose gold. I think this is just a killer piece. This is gonna be actually for the client's wife for her birthday. So really nice. Thank you very much for the business. Really appreciate it. And of course, can't wait to you receive this amazing watch. First order of business, the big deal that we worked on on Friday. So, do you remember what it was? Or not really. Which one? <laughs> Good answer. Every day people ask me, what's going on with the market? What's going on with the market? What's going on with the market? Should I sell my stuff? Should I panic this, that, and the other? Look, nobody is good enough to catch any market, be it watch market, stock market, crypto market, at the very top and say, oh, today is the day I'm gonna sell everything because it's about to go back down. But what people at the same token don't also realize is the fact when it becomes a buyer's market. And right now, this is where we are. We are in that buyer's market. 
and you end up being able to get a deal not just from the private sector as well as dealers out there. Case in point, me and Adrian were working out a $3 million deal from a single deal that included nothing but huge pieces. And by huge, I mean highly priced items. So the guy pulled out a few pieces. I told him I want to buy the whole deal or not. So the skeleton concept, we offered, we put a number of 200 in, in the deal. What skeleton concept? The, not the new one. The older one. The skeleton Terbion concept. One was sold to Josh. He came back a 270 on that one. No way. It's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm just putting the numbers in. Also, we need to keep in mind that when working with a close partner like this, not to burn the watches and ask other people. That should be very important. If well, that's working, the thing. If you're already working with us and you're a close partner, why are you shopping at the death? And well, I had told him that Friday. My question to you is, is, are you okay? If I have to make up for $210,000 difference across, I hold on, don't. Uh, across 16 watches, 210000 divided by 16, I'm at $13,000 a watch. Now, are, you, are you typing that in right now? No. Why? What are you typing right now? That new offer? Send it to me right now. Why don't you come over here and look? Well, visual, I'm, my, I just did legs today. It's, like, it's tough, man. It's Monday. Like, baby didn't sleep. Just, just, just you're right there. Just hit the I, had, I had some bad Chinese yesterday. I've been to the bathroom seven times this morning. Who's, who's worse? Just come over. It'll be easier. Again, he's just come just over. bring him. Come on. This squash shit, bro. <sighs> oh, son of a bitch. I forgot my glasses over there. <laughs> Cameron, do you mind? Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, so I, I wanted to say thank you very much for pulling out all the juice out of the package and bumping my prices up oh. by... A hundred and by a hundred, you bumped up my prices by a hundred and fifty-five thousand, and took out the four watches or the the four watches that I really, really wanted. Actually, look, if a situation where it's our friend in California that may be paying more for them, I don't give a shit. It is what it is. I will, I will give you a, I will look, wait. I'll give you a different offer. No, it doesn't make sense, Jacob. It doesn't make sense. The guy keeps. I'm telling you, the guy, the, the guy, the guy is losing his ass on those pieces. Hold on, hold on. So why didn't if he the the pieces that he's losing mostly his ass on? Is going to be the Mini Repeater Turbion Roger Dubuy, the Roger Dubuy Double Turbion, well, the Hublot Ferrari, well, and the Zenith assume, and the Frank Mueller. Assuming he paid less no, for him. The, 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 the Roger Dubuy's, I gave him all at discounts. He didn't buy right. the retail. You're assuming he paid less, which, which mm. we can't assume that. Jacob, here's what I'd like to come back with. On the 12 pieces that you put back, we were at a million seven ten. You came back at a million eight sixty five. I am going to give you that million eight sixty five. I am going to bump up my offer. And to go back to include the four pieces that he took out to 2.43. So go back to the guy and tell him that, look, here's the offer. I'm at 2430 to be exact. Put it on paper. I got gotcha. you. All right. All right let, me, let me see what I can do. Yeah, yeah. All right, bye. Just so we're on the same page. We got a 26622TI. We got a 26620IO. A 26587TI. A 26347TI. A 26347OR. The Grubel Forza Double Turb, 30 degrees. The Jacob Bacola Astronomia. Roger Dubuis Minute Repeater Turbia. Roger Dubuis Double Turbia. The Frank Mueller Giga Turbia with the Matt Rose. We have the Zenith Defy Zero G Rose Turb. Hublot Ferrari Tech Frame Turb. By the way, I love that watch. We have the Grubel Forza Carbon World. The MBNF Evo Orange. The MBNF Ribbon. Frog Crystal. I'm coming in at 2430. You good with that? We are now. We accepted the offer. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets accepted. A few pieces got pulled out of the deal and we came down to around that two and a half million dollar mark on the deal. You know, when you're in the business for so long, especially you're dealing with another deal that's been around for a while and, and you kind of know each other. It's like sitting at a poker table with somebody for 20 years. You kind of tend to know their tells. After we extended that offer, he came back and he came back with a slightly higher offer of like, I think 50 grand more. And I said, okay, let me think about it. I took a half hour, didn't really think about it, came back and said, no, that's the best that we can do. And both him and I already knew that the deal was done at the number that we set forth. That was just going through the gimmicks. Hey, maybe I can get an extra 50 grand out of this and A, let's see if this guy will stand his ground, but not our first rodeo. We got the deal done and closed. And as a result, we got some amazing watches. You gotta get something off your chest. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> I kind of like this. It's a nice sticker. Adrian, that uh, Grubel for 850 yeah. may not be out of the realm. Thoughts on him 
you think he'll be keen on coming down a bit on? And then are we getting prices on? Um, why are you smiling? It's like a shirt. It's Mark. <laughs> uh, why you have this? You have that look on your face. You have a guilty look on your face, like you just spent a ton of money. I just spent one point five in about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> What did you buy? Very rare Rolex, I cannot say on screen. A, a very rare Rolex, if you... All right, well, tell me about the other ones. Paddock 5982 tone, Paddock 5711 rose gold, Paddock 5990 steel, AP frosted, RM6701 titanium again, this, year, this time much newer. Everybody's saying that the market dipped on Nautilus is an Aquanauts. I bought it at proper price levels, you know? At this point, we just do our best to analyze at this point, smart money is in the buying. If you stop buying, you're dying. You can't, you can't stop buying. I would not be surprised again if we're gonna see the same thing happen when COVID hit. Like three months, it was dead. It dropped and it through the roof. I know you were a, li a little less- I'm waiting for my man, President G. To be like, Shanghai open. <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking of RM67s, you got any fly straps for me? Yeah, let's do this. Well, that's because we have a small wrist. I like Velcros, but I don't like Velcros on 67 or ones or twos. Because I think it, it makes them bulky? Yeah, it makes them bulky. So. Well, what do you got on Velcros? I have like every color, red, black, but oh. again, that's Velcro. That's for a 29. I'm not sure it's going to fit a 67 or one. Put a blue one on, a little elastic on the, on the way going. This is the most so, fire. Alex, sure. green or blue? I think it's green. I don't know what that fits. I would like. probably. I'll go blue. Blue? Yeah, I'll go blue. Alex? Please. Thank you, sir. Let me ask you a dumb question. That 1.5, no. is that outside of that other deal that was nine? No, that's, that's part of it. We, I just secured it. But that's not, that's again, that's, that's Well, well I also have a potential 2.2750 this Friday. By the time the whole deal is done with that million, let's say, it's gonna be probably 10 days, two weeks. Oh, we gotta import the stuff in. I got you. Oh, look who's here. Luke, Luke, did you have a good time at F1? I did. I sure it was like great. It. Speaking of F1, we're still on a hunt to get that F1 car. Yes, I know. Everybody says, goes to one F1 race and all of a sudden he's a fan. Well, it is. I caught the bug. I've been watching every race ever since on TV. Monica was wonderful, but I still want to hang up an F1 car. One of our viewers reached out via Instagram saying that he makes replica cars. And I decided to give him a call and see what it's all about. Hi, this is uh, Roman from Luxury Bazaar. I think one of my staff, uh, or you, re you reached out to us about a car, making an F1 car. Because I'm using it for the uh, purpose of decoration, I just wanted to get some details in regards to what that actually looks like. Perfect, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Pleasure meeting you virtually. So the guy from Wires Only so far got us the F3 replica car, which is the, you know, they use it for a simulator, which I'm not a big fan of, I'll be honest with you. It just doesn't. You know, so I told him I was looking for an F1, an authentic replica works, i.e. show car, display car, etc. But the trick is going to be, if we're going to do this, and if we're hanging this car upside down, I mean, potentially, how long is the car we said? Width is 2 meters, 5.5 meters long, and 2 meters wide. Oh, there's something, what is it, I'm parking this right here. How many meters wide, he said? Uh, two. Chelsea. You know what this is? The car? Yeah. Wait. Can we get it? We're going okay. to get one, yeah. 20,000 likes. Next video, what do we get? Honestly, I thought it was about 10 feet. Yeah. Because it's, I've never been to one up close. Yeah. No, they're huge. I didn't realize they were, they were that long. Me neither. Me neither. It was insane. Like, you were there. Like, over 5.7 meters long, two meters wide. That's 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 18 feet. Yes. Wow. So it's 95 centimeters, <laughs> which is about. <laughs> It's 95 centimeters. Uh, 95 divided by 12 is about eight, right? Guys, who's got a spare F1 car lying around? Like seriously, there's gotta be somebody out there. We own an actual, it's a good client of mine. We own an actual half scale aerodynamic model that Ferrari used in their wind tunnel to develop their 2006 F1 car. We've had it sitting in storage for years and we're open to selling it. It will be an awesome office display piece. Yeah, you opened up a can there. there you <laughs> I'm attaching a screenshot of the listing from when we bought it at auction and a few photos. We own a bunch of other F1 collectibles, yada, yada, yada. He did not give me a price, but this is what it looks like. 
dimensions that he can give? Dimensions, I don't know. Ooh. So, so this, no, but, but this, this is, is scale, this is cool. this, but this is scale down. It's a one to two scale, so it's half the size. That's, m that's more doable. That's, yeah. It is in the bull Okay, well, who drove that? <laughs> uh, probably Schumacher. Sh yeah. yeah. Schumacher. It's Schumacher. 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 He's a shoemaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask him. I'll ask him how much he wants. Yeah. That thing's sick. There you go. We're going to get an F1 car. So one of the cars we were bidding on was the Team Mercedes had a collab with the new crypto exchange FTX or something or other. And they put out a replica car that was actually sprayed by Mad Dog Jones. And they also created an NFT. Unfortunately, it went way over that $100,000 budget. I think all in that car ended up going for 220 some ETH. With that said, I didn't give up and I started bidding on another car. And this was a tribute to Senna, arguably the greatest F1 driver that ever lived. This was a collab with a guy named Jisbar, where he painted the one car with his art, half of it, and the other half were the four teams that uh, Senna drove for. And we were off to bidding on that one. Adrian, can you explain to me what happened with the guy in Singapore, please? Did you back out? It was a conversation. Did you back out? The deal. So three week deal ongoing. I think I, I think we showed some balls buying the deal that we were buying, especially. So he backed out. So essentially what happened was we came to an agreement, signed it, uh, submitted his ID. So then I got a contact of ours in Singapore, made arrangements for them to meet. So the deal was he was going to bring these watches to Singapore. Three no, watches. What was it? Nine what? How much it was nine hundred twenty thousand dollars worth of watches. Right? Okay. Three watches. Two of them he was going to bring to Singapore, and the second one was located in Europe. Also, the boxes and papers of all the watches were in Europe as well. Okay. Therefore, the deal was he was going to bring them to Singapore, our contact there was going to inspect them, we we're going to import them in, and then import from Europe as well. The day that he goes to show up with the watches, he flies in there with his significant other, and the significant other decides to get very upset at the agreed on price. They take the watches back from our contact, contact me in the morning saying, hey, I'm sorry, my significant other wanted a lot more money for the watches. How much more? Much more. 50,000 more, which I was not willing to pay, A, because uh, a deal's a deal, right? It's just a matter of principle. And the fact that the market- This is post you signing the, the post, purchase. Post agreement, post everything, brings the watches there. So I basically kindly told him under no circumstance will I do that, that's not right. And How about the work. fact that you were able to arrange a viewing of watches in Singapore and- I said, I said, what good would I be? You, so you came to me because you trust me. You came to me because I'm a man of my word, right? What good is my word if I go against something as tight as a contract, right? So okay. he understood the whole day. Okay, whatever. He's like, I'm going to bring the so what he was I'm, basically, I'm, I'm if, going, if, he, if he agreed that he basically was just trying to get an extra 50 grand out of you, which is not. So nice. he, so, so, so he apologized. He agreed. Okay. You know what? I'm going to bring the watches back to our contact in Singapore. Okay. Thank you. However, in Europe, I had to send him two separate labels for his uh, for, for for the one paddock, and for the uh, boxing papers of the other watches. If we were to lose that card, would be about a hundred fifty thousand dollar hit. That's what that's how I figured the card. Therefore, he had to split up the shipments. So I explained that to him. That's what our insurance wants us to do. I sent him two labels, and his contact in Europe apparently just didn't want to go to FedEx and drop them off because he he had to go drop one off one day and one the other day, and he refused to do that, so he pulled out of the deal. I woke up in the morning to this message, and to be quite honest with you, I was actually pleased. I was actually relieved. Yeah, one of pleased. the watches went down in value. It's not even about that. I just felt like from, from the get, it just wasn't meant to be. Import, export, high value, and this deal was just going south every which way possible. Hold on a second. Kind of but one of the watches in there, we know that since we started this two weeks ago, has already gone down in value. You would have kept your word and bought it for about that 10%, price. Yeah. Because today, you would have bought that watch for that. One of the watches in there was what? How much? 220? How about this? How about this? We agreed on 920,000 based on today's market and those three specific watches. If he came back to me tomorrow and said, hey, I want to do the deal, I would hit him at 800. So essentially, because his contact in Europe didn't want to go to FedEx, he probably lost out. Who was his contact? Was it a relative or something? A relative. Considering that he bought those three pieces of retail, how much was he making on this deal? About 700 grand. And because his relative didn't want to go to FedEx twice, he, the deal is over. Yep. So on paper, essentially, he lost about 100 grand because I guarantee you anybody he goes to today to sell those watches will get a significant, significantly less valuation. So listen, it is what it is. Wow. All right. So just a few minutes ago, Roman came to me and said, look up the Cinecar that was in this week's video or last week's video, some video. 
Uh, and it's down to three minutes, and Roman is still in the lead. So I'm gonna go tell him that we got two minutes. Two minutes left. Two minutes. You're in the lead. Really? Yeah. There's nobody else been there. No. Not yet. Hold on, I gotta watch this. Alright, come on. Well, for now, I'm gonna lead at uh, 113,500 oh, yeah. British pounds, which translates to 140. 150 grand. I think we're about to win this. Did you win? I think we won. What? No. Check, refresh. I think we might have won. Let's go! Can we get it? Time left, closing, or later. What does that mean? But that's your highest bid. That is my highest bid. Hey! Winning bid! Yes! Yep. So when I actually did end up winning it, I was somewhat stunned. I got excited after that. I wasn't as excited as everybody else in the room. I was a bit stunned because I couldn't actually believe it that we actually won it and that I went about 50 grand over budget. Yeah. Alex, I just spent $150,000 on an F1 car. What are your thoughts? Get the f out of here. Gary, I just spent $150,000 on an F1 car. What are your thoughts? I'm f kill you, man. How are we going to get it into the building? We have secured the F1 car. Let's f go! It's one of a kind. Wow. Just like me. <laughs> and you, Alex. Yeah, thanks. Here we go. One. Getting this inside the building is going to be the biggest challenge. We do know it's 18 feet long. Yeah. yeah. We got to figure out what door. Like oh, I, I'm ecstatic. Yeah, like, this is going to be great. We should make a TikTok where it's like, it finally came. Oh, it arrived. Good. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I look forward to receiving this F1 car, and I'll be more than happy to show it to you because the one thing we have an issue with right now is how the hell we're going to get it through the door. This thing weighs 1,700 pounds. It's 18 feet long and 6 feet wide. We don't have doors that big. It might be a bit of an issue. But other than that, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe button, comment your thoughts on this, uh, hit the bell notification and whatever other buttons you can hit around this video to help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Gray Market.